Intelligent design is not science. It is not a scientific theory. In this three-part video series, I will be explaining why. Part 1 will deal with the inherent problems of intelligent design as a scientific theory. Part 2 would deal with BS irreducible complexity. And Part 3 would deal with Dembski's complex specified information. For a theory that claims to be scientific, it shares very little in common with the procedures and practices that science is associated with. Normally in science you start by doing a little background research. Construct a hypothesis that you will test with an experiment that you will later examine the outcome of. And then, if your findings are good, you will try to get your work published in one of the many peer-reviewed scientific journals the scientific community relies on. The peer review process starts with the excited scientists writing an article that they will submit to a journal editor, which job it is to make sure the article maintains a sufficiently high st scientific standard. If the article holds up, it will be sent to a number of recognized experts in that particular field of science for further scrutinizing. Finally, if the article meets the editorial as well as peer standards, it will be published in a journal. Now it's open for scrutinized by the entire scientific community. If other research groups read your article and are able to duplicate your results, another article of the same topic may be published. After enough confirming evidence has been gathered, the findings can be taught as science in our educational establishments. For a theory that claims to be scientific, it is odd that next to none peer review articles have ever been published in support of their claim. The handful of articles that has been peer reviewed has not been reviewed by biologists, but instead of philosophers and mathematicians. These articles have also been repeatedly discredited by the scientific community. So for a theory that claims to be scientific, one must wonder why the advocates of ID stay clear of the scientific community. Instead of submitting their work for scrutiny, they sell their books directly to the gullible public and cry out for their theory to be taken seriously, while at the same time avoiding the scientific method and approach. The most important thing in intelligent design is to never ever speculate about who or what the intelligent designer is. The reason for this is obvious to anyone who has ever done so. The intelligent designer in question can only be put in one of two categories. Either the intelligent designer has a natural origin, but can't be from Earth, which makes him an extraterrestrial, or in common language an alien, which puts him in the science fiction category. The only other possibility is that the alleged intelligent designer does not have a natural origin at all, which by default would then put him in the supernatural category. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance for intelligent design advocates to never discuss the origin of the intelligent designer, because as soon as they do, the theory immediately gets exposed to what it is, science fiction or religion. Science is neither science fiction, nor does it deal with the supernatural. The goal of intelligent design is to fly in under the radar, disguised as science, in order to promote a not that well hidden agenda. The number of intelligent design advocates that adhere to the science fiction designer are few to none, so we can conclude that the whole reason behind the intelligent design movement is to advocate the God did it approach to science, which isn't science at all but suits science at best. So the reasons for avoiding the question, who is the intelligent designer, are apparent. And for me that would be a far more interesting question than what they are trying to prove. If they were correct, then it would be of vital interest to find out the identity of this mysterious designer who can never be mentioned. For not only would the designer be responsible for designing humans, he would also have to be responsible for the design of some of the most vicious bacteria and viruses that are known to mankind. Establishing his identity would be a top priority, as he, if he existed, is currently conducting a biochemical warfare upon humanity. He has designed horrible viruses that are solely designed to attack humans, and make sure that the infection is as horrendously painful and outdrawn as possible. 
In order to seek out this designer and kill him, we would have to first establish his identity. But somehow I get the feeling that the underlying agenda of intelligent design advocates are not to bring this evil and mischievous designer to justice and execute him for his crimes against humanity. That concludes part 1 in this video series. The content should have been sufficient enough to discredit intelligent design as a scientific theory without even touching on the actual claims of ID advocates. In part 2 I will dissect Behe's irreducible complexity and further explain why ID cannot be considered a scientific theory. Until next time, this is Dr. Simon Says, wishing you good health.